Ecuador was until relatively recently seen as one of the safest countries in Latin America. That reputation has surely now been destroyed. On January 9, 2024, images of hooded gunmen storming a TV studio were broadcast around the world. It was one of a number of violent incidents that took place that day, including prison riots, widespread hostage-taking, the kidnapping of several police officers and a series of car explosions. President Nayib Bukele's leadership in trying to crack the gang problem through the use of military and the suspension of democratic norms. In the aftermath of the January 9th violence, Ecuadorian President Daniel Noboa named 22 gangs as terrorist organizations, a designation that makes them legitimate military targets. He has also imposed a 60-day state of emergency, during which Ecuadorians will be subject to curfews while armed forces try to restore order in the streets and the country's gang-controlled prisons. Ecuador, Victim of Geography To understand why Ecuador has become the epicenter of gang violence, you need to understand both the geography and history of Latin America's drug trade. Ecuador has a near, 1, 400-mile, 2,237-kilometer, coastline through which drugs from the continent can be taken to markets in Europe and the United States. But it wasn't until the US-led war on drugs put the squeeze on cartels in other countries that Ecuador became the preserve of narco gangs. Plan Colombia In the 1980s and 1990s, Colombia was the center of the international illegal drug trade. This is hardly surprising, given that it was the top producer of coca leaves. But beginning in 2000, a joint initiative between Colombian authorities and the U.S., known as Plan Colombia, pumped billions of dollars into an effort to clamp down on the Colombian cocaine trade. The impact locally of these outside gangs has been disastrous for Ecuador. Prior Immunity European and Mexican organizations ran local operatives as enforcers and transporters. And these are the people who have become the backbone of Ecuador's gang problem today. The escape from jail of Los Caneros leader, Jose Adolfo Macias, on January 7, 2024, set off the latest explosion of violence, militarizing the response. Explaining how Ecuador became the epicenter of drug gang violence is one thing. Trying to find a way out for the country now is another. Across Latin America, countries have employed different models to counter organized crime, with varying degrees of success. Colombia, with extensive U.S. assistance, transformed its military and police and went to war with the cartels. The strategy somewhat successfully dismantled organized crime groups in the country, even if it failed to halt drug trafficking itself or lower the high levels of violence in Colombia. Mexican authorities have tried a different approach and have been reluctant to confront the country's drug cartels head-on. Path of El Salvador With an unprecedented wave of violence in Ecuador, it looks like President Noboa is looking to take his country down the same path as El Salvador. He has ordered the Ecuadorian military to neutralize the criminal gangs that operate in the country. Whether the approach will work is another matter. Ecuador is in a weaker position than El Salvador. As one man told the Associated Press in the aftermath of January 9's violence, the government needs to employ a firmer hand to have no mercy, no tolerance or respect for the human rights of criminals.